Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're going to be taking our pumpkin modeling skills and creating a print in place fidget toy. Uh, now, this isn't a traditional fidget toy, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of different eyes and a couple of different mouths. And you can rotate the part around and you can sort of configure the face. So, this is a fun little thing to model and it goes over some basic techniques of understanding how print in place models work. We've done a video on how to model a pumpkin, so we're not going to be going through that in this video. You can start with the supplied data set that's in the description of this video. And the main thing that you want to make sure that you do is understand that it needs to be a solid model. So we're looking at a solid model in this case, so you can see directly into the center, complete solid body. Now, if you are modeling a pumpkin that's hollow, you will need to cap it off. You can start with the form body in this design and tweak it and manipulate it, but it's about a 50 millimeter diameter sphere as a starting point. So it's going to print that size on a 3D printer. If you need it to be bigger or smaller, then you want to do that before we start making any adjustments because the gaps that we put in place are important for print in place models and also parts that fit together. So keep all that in mind that the starting size is going to be important if you want to scale it up or down, you're going to have to plan accordingly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start a new sketch and I'm going to be using this right plane. It really doesn't matter which plane you use, but you need to be looking either at the front or the right side. The main thing that we need to do is we need to understand how this sort of print in place functionality works. So I'm going to go to my display settings and I'm going to change my display to just be a wireframe display. And I'm going to toggle off my analysis or my section view. And what this is going to allow me to do is if I use slice, you can kind of see that even with the wireframe display, what we're getting here is we're sort of getting this, this model that's going to give us problems. So what I want to do instead is go to create, project, include, and intersect, select the pumpkin, and then hide the pumpkin body itself. So now we've got a starting point. I can create a line across the bottom. And this is going to be where we begin defining our print in place geometry. So I'm going to create a couple of reference lines, but remember that whatever 3D printer you're using, you need to understand what its overhang angles are and what those limitations are. We're going to stick with 45 degrees. Most printers nowadays will do 50 degrees okay. You can even go a bit steeper than that, but we're going to stick with 45. That's kind of a general rule. I'm going to go ahead and create a vertical line in the center because we only need to work on one side. We're going to be doing a revolved cut. And we need to remember that we want to have enough material at the bottom that we can print in place and have good adhesion, but we also need to make sure that we're working within these angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming up and to the left and then up and to the right, and I'm going to go past this boundary right here. Then we're going to use our dimension tool, which you can use D on the keyboard. And basically what we want, is, we want here is 45 degrees. Now, you can see that this is automatically perpendicular based on the way it was sketched. That's fine. It doesn't need to be, but it keeps the other line at 45 degrees. It can be obviously steeper if we want. But the main thing here is we need to realize this little section right here, that's going to be how much area that we have adhering to the build plate. So we want to make sure it's not too small. Also, let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit. And then we need to decide what's going on up here. We don't really want this to just come through and attach here. We actually want a little bit of a straight line, but it has to be very small because we can't print true overhangs or at least they start to get pretty ugly on models like this. So you either want it to be this 45 degree angle or you want an incredibly short line. Um, so when I say incredibly short, I'm going to go ahead and dimension this. I'm going to make it essentially one pass or a little bit smaller than one pass. So generally with a 0.4 nozzle, we're looking at somewhere around 0.4 to 0.45 for our trace width. So making sure that it's not too wide so that we have a bunch of extra traces trying to build in space, that's going to be important. So let's hit escape to get off our dimension tool. Next thing we can do is dimension this if we want. We don't really have to at this point, but if you feel like you want to figure this, uh, you know, these sizes out, then we can go ahead and start adding dimensions so it doesn't move around. So again, D on the keyboard, I want at least, let's say, two millimeters here. The rest of this is, doesn't really matter. We need to have some amount of height here, but it doesn't have to be driven. Uh, if you want to drive it, give it a value of three millimeters. And then this one here, let's go ahead and hit escape. Um, this one here should be fully defined. I don't know why it's blue. 
but it should be fully defined. The next thing I'm going to do is double click this edge and I'm going to go to offset. I'm going to go to offset outward and I need a distance of at least minus 0.4 or 0.5. Uh, the reason that's important is because that's where we're going to get enough of a gap that the parts are still going to move and the parts themselves will not print together, uh, meaning they won't adhere to each other. So if it's smaller than this gap, 0.4, then you're going to start to have problems where you may end up having these multiple pieces stuck together. So if we come up here, we'll need a little bit of an extra line here. So what we run into with this is this line right here is now longer than 0.4. So it, it may start to cause us problems when we print these, and we'll have to double check it in the slicer to make sure. One trick we can do is maybe do a small chamfer on these edges and, and kind of shorten that length. We're going to leave it for right now, but we may come back and, and have to deal with that later. Um, this one down here, I'm going to try to trim it. It's probably going to break a few things. You can see it doesn't like that. Um, so we've got our close profile here, and that's going to be essentially our first revolved cut. So this is one section here, and this is the, the cut or the section that we're going to be removing. So now we need to repeat that process. I'm going to bring these dimensions in because they're kind of crazy out here. So now we need to repeat that process for our second segment or whatever number of segments we want. Depending on what you plan to do, this bottom section right here, so basically this, can be a mouth section and then an upper section can be eyes and then there, the third section will be the top. We really don't need to do much more than that unless you want to add another section for noses, but I want to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm going to come off of here, I'm going to come basically up through and say okay. We're going to follow the same sort of configuration. We'll make that perpendicular. Instead of doing another dimension, I'm going to make these parallel and sort of drag this inward. Uh, now, the thing that we want to be careful with is we cannot make this section here too small because then it's very likely, and, I, and I've had this happen, the adhesion of that bottom piece, because it's a larger diameter, is so strong that when you go to pull this off a build platform, if you happen to be using glue or if you've got really good adhesion and you try to get it off while the plate is still warm, you may actually break the part in that section. So I'm going to leave, I want to make sure that I don't make it too narrow here. So I'm going to come down and add a dimension between here. Let's say four and a half millimeters. That looks okay. And then up here, once again, we want that small straight section. So L for our line tool, D for our dimension, and we'll make it again 0.4. Again, the heights, I don't really care so much about the heights. It's not a big deal. We can play around with them. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to offset this. So once again, we're going to do an offset of minus 0.4. We'll say OK. Uh, this one down here, we can trim. It's also T on the keyboard if you want to do that. It makes these dimensions go kind of... Looney Tunes, but we'll pull them back. And then up here, because the curvature is starting to go back, uh, this edge is actually outside, which is okay. We'll pull it back. Uh, so now basically what we have is we've got these two cuts. If you want to round these corners off, you can do that. Remember that we used an offset here, so it's actually probably not a great time to do it. You should do it before you do an offset. They can also stay sharp. They don't have to be rounded. It's just kind of your personal preference. If you make them rounded and you use a large radius fillet, then the individual sections may float up and down. But if you leave it sharp, then they'll tend to stay stuck together or, or they'll stay sort of um, a bit tighter together. So that's kind of a nice bo uh, benefit or bonus there. All right, so now we're gonna bring the pumpkin back. I'm gonna go back to shaded display, which is control and six on the keyboard, or you can come up to visual styles and go here. And then we're gonna do a revolve. Uh, so select our profiles, and then we'll select our axis. This can be Z or one of our vertical lines. We're going to cut, and we'll say OK. So now if we go back to our section analysis, what we should see is we've got these individual sections. Uh, so this main body here, that part is going to be able to spin freely. And then we've got this section that should be able to spin freely, and this one can spin as well. Uh, because of these angles here, these little V cuts, the parts are going to print in place, but this part will not be able to fall off 
because it'll run into the angle on the other part. And same thing over here. So that's really the main thing, the main reason why we're able to put all these pieces together is because we've got those sort of little V cuts here. So at this point, it just comes down to designing the different faces that you want to use. Uh, now, there are a couple ways that we can do this. Probably the best or easiest way for us is to use emboss. And to do that, I'm going to just do a simple offset plane. It helps me a little bit to have an offset plane out in front of my part. I'm going to right click and repeat that. And I'll pull one. Uh, let's go ahead and pull one back. And we'll repeat that again. And I'll just do a couple over here. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of these different faces. You can obviously spend some time and, and do this yourself, but I want to at least show you the process. So we're going to start here, create a sketch. And basically I'm going to go to my polygon tool and I'm just going to start creating a polygon here. I'm going to change this to three, which will give me a triangle and then hit escape and then pull this wherever, um, wherever I want it to be. So we can resize it. They can be close together. They can be kind of farther apart. They can be on the little creases. And let's go ahead and make that horizontal. I'm going to add a midline and then mirror it across. Yeah, you know, so this is a very simple eyes, but now with the mirror, what we can do is we can reposition them. And in the same sketch, we can also do a mouth. You do have to be a little bit careful here because with features that are going to be 3D printed, if you are having these be recessed inside the part, then having things like triangles, those print perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about that. The angles can be potential problems depending on what, how you set it up. But for things like um, a mouth that may have a complete horizontal overhang, that can potentially be a problem. So my suggestion with things like this is to make sure that if you're going to emboss or deboss it, if you're going to sink it into the part, that you don't sink it in too far, just enough that you can actually see it. And that way it still has support from the surrounding material. So I'm going to use a spline here just to kind of give it a sort of a wiggly face. And then we'll say, okay. Uh, so at this point, we're going to go and do emboss. I'm going to pick these two triangles. The face is going to be here. And then we're going to change this to the deboss. And I'm going to make it minus half a millimeter. So you can see that it cuts in. It gets a little crazy because of these angles here, but that's fine. The 3D printer doesn't really care. We'll just have to double check those when we're in the slicer. And then I'll have to go back to my sketch and just simply do the same thing here. So emboss, pick my face and say, okay. So at this stage, we'll be able to rotate each of these around and just sort of pick the face. Uh, so if we come over here, it's gonna be the same process. I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna walk through each of these, but I just wanted to give you an idea. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and just add a couple more and we'll speed through it and then you can sort of make your own. All right, so I just did three faces. So again, three sets of eyes, three mouths, but you get the idea. This is, you know, just yours to play around with. And then we're just going to do a save as mesh. All right, uh, I'm gonna send it to Bamboo Studios and then let's slice it. So the big thing that we wanna check here is make sure that we don't have any support issues. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And basically, as we slide down this thing, we want to make sure that each of the individual layers are separated. So we can see here, we've got these sort of um, orange sections. And as it goes down, we've got these separated sections. It should go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to do an infill, of course, on this, but see three individual rings on the bottom. And as it builds up, there's no supports or anything. The mouths will be okay. Again, because we only did like half a millimeter, those should all print fine. Now we can go ahead and send it to the printer and see what this thing looks like. So there we go, everything printed fine. I used a um, Bamboo P1S to print this and the quality looks great. I just used all the standard settings with the 0.4 nozzle. I didn't change um, anything from the default sort of uh, Bamboo PLA. And I'm really happy with the quality. The, again, the sort of 
flat overhangs that we created in these areas where it was, uh, you know, 0.4 millimeters. These are really the biggest areas you want to be careful with. You don't want to make that horizontal section too long because then it will have trouble printing and you may actually get each of these layers stuck together. That's obviously not something that you want. You can spend a lot more time trying to design faces or you know pieces that, that key together. This was just a simple example. And in reality, what you would wanna do is go back with maybe a, a marker and color this in black or another color so they really stand out. Uh, but overall process is really simple. And we applied it to a pumpkin here. We've done a similar video like this with plasticity and a sphere. And you can really apply it to you know, cylinders and spheres and shapes like this pumpkin to make unique little print in place things to fidget with. So if you have any other ideas for something like this, leave a comment and let me know what you're going to do with it. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.